Hi, I'm Nikki Fry, and this is Candace Shively. We're with Utah State University Extension. Today we are going to focus on winter deer damage. We'll talk about ways to identify it and ways to avoid it. Unfortunately, a fence is the only sure way to keep deer out of your yard, but something like this just isn't necessarily practical for the homeowner setting. Uh, today we're out here at Big Trees Nursery in Canaraville, Utah, and they have a lot of trees that they're trying to protect from deer. So this fence is a really practical thing for them in their large, large setting. If a fence is something that you're able to do, you want to make sure that it's at least seven and a half feet tall, that it's nice and sturdy, and uh, that, that you keep the gate closed so that deer aren't getting in there. Uh, today we're going to focus more on uh, ways to exclude individual plants. Uh, we'll talk about um, some repellents and some things that you can do as a homeowner to keep deer out of your yard and away from your precious plants. Nikki, I haven't had problems all summer. Why am I seeing damage now? Well, that's actually a really good question. There are two reasons to explain why you might be seeing damage in the winter instead of in the spring. The first is that most of the deer populations in Utah are migratory. And so they've spent their summers up in the mountains, eating their native vegetation up there. And then once the temperatures drop and the snow starts to fall, they're forced down out of the higher elevations into their winter range, which are usually the small valleys and the benches in the area. And so you might not have seen them all spring, summer, and fall because they were elsewhere. But now they're in the winter range. And it just so happens that your backyard is their winter range. And they don't mind being around you as long as there's shelter and food for them to eat. If there's not native vegetation for them to eat, they will eat your plants and your shrubs. The second reason is that it's hard for deer to get the nutrition that they need in the wintertime. And so they may be eating the native forbs and shrubs that are available to them at first, but as the winter goes on and the temperatures decrease, their nutritional demands are still the same, but they can't find the food that they need. And so they're going to look for the the young of your shoots on your plants, they're going to look at leafy vegetation, and they're going to look for terminal buds on the trees and plants in your yard. And so a lot of times you'll see, you might not notice the small damage, like taking off the terminal buds, but you will notice something like this, where the deer have come in after they found everything else available to them, and they've damaged this arborvitae. They've taken off all the green vegetation and just left the twigs and caused a severe amount of damage to this tree. Another type of damage that you might notice to your trees and shrubs is rub damage, where the bucks have come in in the late fall and early winter and they've rubbed their, their antlers, trying to get the velvet off of their antlers during the rutting season. So you might notice these long strips uh, where there's no bark. Usually this happens between two to four feet. If you happen to see it around five or six feet, don't freak out. You don't have deerzilla running around your backyard you probably got the damage when there was two or three feet of snow on the ground and the deer was rubbing their antlers then. So Candace, once we do have damage on the tree from a deer rubbing, is there something that the landowner should do to keep this tree alive and to prevent further damage? Yeah, Nikki, actually the best thing to do is just try and exclude the deer from the trees and shrubs that you're having problems with. Um, a little bit later on in this video, we'll show you some, some ways and give you some tips for excluding, excluding deer. Um, what you don't want to do is, is rub tar or any sort of uh, commercial sealant that's available to cover up tree wounds. Um, those actually do a lot more harm than good. They, they trap moisture um, and provide a great environment for disease and insects to flourish. So uh, again, don't put anything on the wound, leave it alone, let the air circulate, um, and create some sort of exclusion so the deer are, are no longer bothering your trees and shrubs. Burlap barriers like this one here are a great way to protect individual trees from, um, from damage, from browsing and from rubbing antlers. Um, another great benefit uh, to barriers like this is they'll protect your evergreens uh, from wind damage in the wintertime. Um, so if you're having a problem with either, a barrier like this might be a great option for you. Um, commercial tree wraps are also available. Uh, this one here is just a burlap that's been cut into smaller or thinner pieces that you can wrap around your trunk. Um, and this one is just a paper that, that you wrap around the base of the tree and then just secure either one with tape. Um, unfortunately, they won't uh, protect your trees from damage from rubbing of the antlers, uh, but they will help a lot with feeding, feeding damage. Uh, basically, you just kind of wrap them around and they secure themselves. And um, then when you get to the top of your tree, just use a piece of tape and they work, they work quite well. Another added benefit to, to tree wraps like this is um, winter sun scald is a common problem, especially on soft uh, bark trees like fruit trees. 
Uh, and this will really help protect against that too, but that's, that's a whole other topic for a different video. Um, if you do have some browsing damage on any of your trees or shrubs and you end up with broken branches um, or just kind of uh, bare tips here, um, the best thing to do is just kind of come in and, and prune out anything broken. Um, and then uh, anything that's been browsed, just try and prune it back to a bud or a branch so it's not just, um, it's not just a, a stick hanging off the end there. It just looks a little nicer. It's more aesthetically pleasing. So Candace, I mentioned before that deer are going to try to go after the most palatable species and the most nutritious species during the winter. Could you help us understand what those species might be and how we can find the best trees to plant to avoid damage? Yeah, definitely. Um, deer really like to eat plants with soft leaves. So they're going to love your ewes. They're going to love Arborvita. Um, if you're having problems with deer and you're looking to replace some plants or if you're starting a new landscape and you know that you're going to have problems with deer, um, I would definitely suggest planting some things that that deer are not necessarily attracted to. Um, unfortunately, a hungry deer is, is going to eat anything, so no plant is entirely deer proof, but there are definitely some that are more resistant and can tolerate uh, the browsing more than others. Um, a great example is this blue spruce here. Um, some others for Utah would be a Russian sage, and lilacs are also great choices. Uh, there's multiple lists available online uh, that can give you a great idea of what would work well in your area. A couple of my favorites are produced by the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. Um, and there's another one by uh, Rutgers University Extension Program. And they're both great resources. I definitely suggest looking into those. There are a lot of home remedies out there. And unfortunately, they provide spotty control at best. Um, I'm sure you've heard about hanging soap from a pantyhoe in your tree or using human hair. Um, unfortunately, the deer are just, they're kind of used to you, so these things really don't provide um, consistent control. So this is kind of cool. It's a motion sensor sprinkler. So you place this in an area where you're having problems with deer, and when they walk by, the, it, the sprinkler would turn on and scare them. Um, unfortunately, unless you live in a warmer climate, this probably isn't a great winter option for you. Um, but when spring comes along and things thaw out, it might be something that's worth trying. Uh, just make sure you tell your spouse where you put it in your yard. Another way to keep deer from damaging your trees and shrubs is to use repellents. You can either use repellents that are made at home or you can use a, ho a host of commercial repellents that are out on the market. There's two types of repellents. One category is the contact repellent. And as its name suggests, deer actually have to come in contact with that repellent for it to work. With a contact repellent, you actually spray it directly to the plant or tree that you want to keep the deer off of. Obviously, in a nursery situation, that would be quite extensive, but it's more applicable for those of us that just have a few ornamentals in the front yard. Um, those contact repellents irritate the deer and cause the deer to not go towards that plant again. One home remedy that you can use is a mixture of eggs and water applied to the plant. Some people also have been known to successfully use uh, hot sauce. The problem with the contact repellents, or any repellent actually, is their durability. If there's any moisture or any rain, you have to immediately reapply that repellent in order to increase its effectiveness. And as with any repellent, the control that you receive is going to be spotty at best. Some of you might be thinking to provide an alternative food source, such as these pumpkins here, um, as a way to divert the deer from the trees and the plants that you like. That's actually a really bad idea because in the end you're actually going to be attracting deer to your yard where they will eat that supplemental food but they're also still going to probably damage your trees and plants as well. While we all enjoy watching deer in our yards, in the wintertime they can actually cause problems through over browsing our plants and trees and from bucks rubbing their antlers. There are a lot of methods out there for keeping deer out of your yard, but not all of them are practical for the homeowner. So hopefully the tips that we gave you today on exclusion, repellents, and plant selection can help you out.